Welcome to my talk about accessibility, where we will discuss what it's like to uh, incorporate accessibility in digital products. Let's start with a simple example. My grandma is in a retirement home, and there isn't much she can do besides playing bingo, watch TV, and read. And that's why a few years ago, I got her a Kindle. And actually, over the past few years, she managed to read over 200 books, so she, she reads quite a bit. And uh, once she dropped the, the Kindle and it broke, so I got her a new one. No problem. However, the new one is super sleek, but it doesn't have buttons. And everything is on touch and swipe gestures, and she's not used to that. Uh, and there's no dedicated accessibility mode with, with, with buttons or something else. So that was an obst obstacle for her, and it took her a while to adjust to it. Before we continue, let's say a thing or two about me. Uh, I studied both engineering and design, what I thought was uh, suitable for working in IT as a designer. And before Infinum, I worked as a, as a 3D artist and a graphic designer. Uh, also, I've been at Infinum at, uh, for the past uh, four years. And for the past two years, I've been working on Philips Master Connect. Uh, it's uh, an app for managing wireless lighting systems. It's similar to Philips Hue, but not for re residential use, but for, uh, for uh, commercial buildings. Uh, and using uh, Master Connect, the app, and uh, the universe of products, uh, up to 75% of energy is saved compared to conventional lighting. And uh, the app is used mostly by the light system installers, so we have a very limited user base. Uh, however, accessibility is important even for them, because most of the time they're either on a ladder or using a tool in the other hand while you're using the phone with the app. So, uh, yeah, accessibility is, is important for them as well. Uh, if you would like to know more what it's like to design for IoT, uh, there's a blog post that I wrote. Uh, it's on, available on our blog at infinum.com slash blog if you'd like to, to know more about it. Uh, also, uh, besides other projects, I worked on a Porsche Group Card. It's a digital loyalty program built for Porsche Slovenia. Now let's go back to the topic of our talk, which is accessibility. And today I'll guide you through our process of incorporating accessibility into our workflow. Uh, also listen closely uh, until the very end because you'll get something at the end. So first let's start with uh, what accessibility actually is. It's a concept whether a, whether a product or a service can be used by everyone. This definition uh, mentions quality, it says that it's quality of being blah blah blah, uh, is because um, actually accessibility is a major factor when, when we are rating a quality of a product. And there's a common misconception uh, that uh, accessibility focuses on people with disabilities. And that's simply not true uh, because we're focusing on everyone. Uh, disabilities do not have to be only permanent. If you're recovering from something, for example, that's a temporary disability. And situational disabil disabilities are super often. Uh, when, example, when you have a kid, I assume you're holding it uh, in your arm all the time. So you're, you're using phone and doing other stuff with the other, uh, the other hands only. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, a, um, there's a lot of examples of situational disability that we all experience at some point. And in, in practice, there are even more examples. This is, a very, this is a super common example. So during summer, you'll probably have a hard time using, using your phone in direct sunlight because, uh, yeah, the, the, the contrast is not, not good enough. That's why it's important while designing for, um, for mobile apps and everything else, uh, to maintain a good accessibility using good contrast. Uh, mobile banking and telecom apps are used by a lot of people, as you know, uh, so it, accessibility is actually crucial for them. We created the Raiffeisen app that you can see, and one blind person uh, actually reached out once, stating that they cannot use one feature. Uh, and they did not want to uh, ask anybody else uh, to do it for them, since it, uh, that part had some financial personal info, so they reached uh, out actually to customer support for us to, to fix that part, and which we gladly did, of course. And a while ago, we used to have uh, talks like this one online. And initially, we were targeting more local, uh, regional design community, and these talks were creation, in creation. Uh, and they did not have closed captions because YouTube doesn't generate closed caption automatically for creation. And uh, some uh, hearing impaired people reached out that they could not understand what we were saying. Uh, what was a big deal, uh, and especially considering we would invite some, uh, for example, designers from Rimac Automobili to, uh, to uh, have a talk uh, and discuss their design process behind designing their cars. 
If, they, if that's not enough for you, uh, there are more than 3,000 lawsuits about use, uh, accessibility in the US that you can, you can go through. Uh, in the US, all digital products have to be accessible to some degree. In the EU, that's not yet the case, but it will be soon. Uh, currently, currently, in the EU, only government and public websites and apps have to be uh, accessible completely. And when it all adds up, there are 1 billion people that are experiencing accessibility uh, at any given moment. And uh, they all want to buy stuff on the web the same, as, the same way as we all do. Uh, they want to order food and order taxi. And they want to read the news and the latest jokes on the internet. And it's up to all of us uh, to enable that for them. Now let me explain you how we managed to start the initiative um, in an agency of more than 300 people. Um, <clears throat> so first, uh, we treated the initiative as any other project because that's the workflow we're all familiar with. And it was actually the only way we would manage to do it. Uh, also, uh, it's crucial to have one person from every team uh, participating because accessible design, for example, accessible design does not matter if it's not implemented with accessibility in mind. Also, it doesn't matter if it's implemented, if it's not tested with accessibility in mind. So, uh, yeah, everybody needs to be included in the life cycle of a product for it to work. Uh, and uh, we proposed the initiative to the, to the management of the company first by uh, creating a team. We created a plan and we estimated uh, that plan. And then we knew how much it will cost for the company to start this whole uh, accessibility initiative. And then we uh, pitched that uh, idea to the, to the management and luckily our management the, the saw, saw the value of uh, such idea and they were very supportive of it. Uh, I have to say, uh, we all shared the responsibility of ever pushing each other uh, to work on this. Uh, otherwise, similar company initiative usually often uh, fall apart. Uh, and especially because it's a vast and complex area, and it's very difficult to get it right. Uh, accessibility in digital products is even a newer thing that you, can, that you, you probably can imagine. Uh, so we approach this uh, subject with modesty, always striking to, always striving to learn more and to improve. And uh, well, all the time people ask us how big of an overhead is it? It's a good question, but keep in mind it's always the overhead is always bigger uh, if we have to fix things later on. So if, if you include accessibility from the very beginning, then it's way less work to, to create an accessible app. Also, uh, it's more, more of a principle than an additional feature. The same way as we have good documentation, for example, or documented code, or organized design files. It's not an overhead, it's basically a way of working is the default, and we try to treat it that way uh, for our new product, uh, projects. Uh, our accessibility criteria are based on the web content accessibility guidelines uh, that are made by uh, the World Wide Web Consortium, which is the main standardizational body for the web. Uh, however, the, the issue is that it focuses on the web, not on mobile apps. Believe it or not, it's not very accessible either. It's not that user friendly. It's kind of difficult to, I tried, and it's kind of difficult to incorporate their rules into your everyday um, workflow as a designer. Mostly because um, these criteria are like super difficult to read and super difficult to understand. For example, here is uh, one criteria about basically undo, because we always have to let users uh, undo things if they create a if they do a mistake. And uh, let me read uh, one part for you. So down event, it's basically like a click, but more abstract, let's say. And they say down event of the pointer is not used to execute any part of the function. And the opposite of that is up reversal. The up event reverses any outcome of the preceding down event. What? Don't feel bad if you don't get it. It's really difficult to understand. That's why we um, adapted these rules to easy to understand uh, principles for designers, engineers, and testers. And we are coming up with uh, these guidelines that are based on four main principles. The first one, the apps have to be perceivable. Uh, it means, uh, you know, it states how users perceive your product visually or some other way. Uh, operable uh, principles explain how users navigate and operate an app. So that's related to mostly to navigation inside of an app. Uh, also, uh, the, the third principle is understandable. It ensures all content is understandable uh, to users. So all text, all video, all audio and so on. And also it's important for uh, the, the app to be robust. That means that it supports um, assistive technologies. So it's uh, 
compatible with uh, uh, assisted technologies on the market. Feel free. Here we have some examples of inaccessible and accessible design. Uh, what do you think, what is, what's wrong on the left example? Do you have any ideas? It's uh, related to, to this part here uh, with, the, with the pie chart. Too small and too great. Uh, yes. First, First, yes, it's too small. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Uh, so there's the only way users can identify which part of the pie chart is which one and it's by color. And what about people who cannot uh, distinguish colors? There's no way they can understand which part is which one. That's why on the, on the right example, uh, besides color, we can uh, identify parts from the lesion by, by the icon, with the icon as well. We have uh, another example. Uh, here on the right, we have a focus state. Uh, what do you think, uh, why do you think uh, focus state is important? In mobile apps, it uh, doesn't have to do anything with. Uh, I don't know it's it should be the default. Uh, the thing is that users uh, there are users who are not navigating apps using their finger. Maybe they're using their voice, some external uh, keyboard, or some other controls. And if we have a focus state or selected state uh, shown for them on the screen, then they can know which part uh, they are selecting and which part is active currently. Uh, there is one accessibility criteria uh, that states that users need to be in control when the screen, when the content on the screen uh, is refreshed. And even big players like Apple sometimes do not take that into account. I'm sure most of you at some point shared some f files, uh, especially if you're doing it on, uh, on, on iOS or uh, macOS, you can use AirDrop. And the thing is, uh, here we have a list of recipients. Uh, and it refreshes on its own, I know, every five seconds or every 10 seconds. And it can happen that right before you, you click, uh, it refreshes and you send a nude to a wrong person, for example. It was a joke, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, all, student, all content needs to uh, have useful alternative text. Otherwise, everything will sound basically like it does on the left, button, 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 and so on. So it's important for uh, people who are using voiceover feature on their phones, where a uh, phone is reading them what is shown on the screen. It's important for them, for the, for the app to, to read the correct and useful uh, actions. Uh, also, all apps need to have a clear section uh, users can move through using navigation. If you have an app that is similar, this, like, like an Instagram, for example, uh, if you have stories on top, uh, if you don't uh, uh, implement the, uh, and design the navigation properly, it could happen that users have to uh, go through all the stories to reach posts, scroll through all the posts to reach the navigation on the bottom. So uh, we need to have clear sections users can, can go, go through using navigation. So they can select their, either they want to uh, uh, hear at least stories, uh, um, uh, or they can navigate through the, through the posts and they, they can choose the navigation on the bottom. And more people than you know uh, actually uh, use feature of uh, changing text on their phones. Uh, a lot of users do it and it's important for apps to facilitate that without breaking, uh, breaking the UI. And if it's uh, not supported then it, uh, the, the UI gets broken like it is on the left. Uh, also, don't, don't be platform and input specific. Do you know what is wrong on the example on the left? I'll give you a hint. Uh, it's about this line right there. It's difficult for type on your level. This one says select your level. Do you know what's wrong on the left? Well, tagging is one of the ways you can select. Exactly, exactly. And you want to all, invite all the users to use this screen and to select. And basically, not everybody is tapping, but everybody everybody is selecting. So uh, you can uh, you can change the, the copy to accommodate all users. In short, uh, accessibility and usability is what makes uh, good apps good and good design good and good products good. And to ensure that, we introduced accessibility review. It's a new service that we are offering, and we are evaluating our best product, uh, products. Uh, products even that we did not work on 
and uh, use our accessibility checklist for it. And now we are coming to the part uh, something you get. It's uh, what I mentioned at the beginning. It's an accessibility checklist. Uh, it's, it's public. Uh, and using it, you can compare all your features and our principles. And feel free to use this checklist uh, to make sure no user gets left behind. Thank you very much. Feel free to scan it and uh, use it. Thank you, Manu. Thanks. Uh, does everybody have their pencils? Okay, so colleagues from Italy will now be handing out tests to check if you've been listening. <laughs> so what's the down event? Does anybody remember? Yeah, uh, with which slide? Ah, yeah, sure. By the way, if you registered by email, you get this. Oh, yeah, so. email, but you can. But it's cool or if we see you yeah, scan yeah. in it. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's cool. But it's cooler if you see you scanning it. How accessible yeah. it is. Okay, so do you have any questions for Manuel? He's been, uh, you know, showcasing his work. So they are, I'd say, essentially kind of two parts to what he has uh, talked about. So first one is actually driving this through, through an organization that's fairly big, so 300 even more even people, mm -hmm. and also the second one are the principles uh, on their own. So do you have any questions for Manuel? How do you negotiate with clients that this is something worth of investing? That's a good idea. That's a good question. And a good idea to, to pitch to clients. Uh, sometimes it's not easy. Uh, it depends uh, on uh, how many users they have. So, for example, we, uh, we said that up to 15% of users uh, experience some kind of disability. And sometimes that 15% is crucial and it's definitely worth for them to, to invest in that part. And if it's uh, more uh, limited user base of some super specific apps, uh, then less people use it and it's a bit more tricky to pitch it to, to clients. But as we said, we are trying to uh, incorporate that as, uh, as part of a default workflow, so it kind of goes with the overall level of quality that we include. And is this design path for accessibility a different kind of process during the design phase? Uh, yes. Yes, it's uh, the very beginning with uh, the, the discovery phase and everything, the target audience, users, and so on, that's basically the same. But uh, the, the, um, when, working, when you are working with the UI on uh, navigation and other stuff, there are some things, some specific things you need to take into account. Yes, like copy and, uh, as I said, navigation, when, uh, when it's being implemented, there are a lot of things that need to be addressed. It's, so it's sort of like additional work after the design process. Kind of, yeah. 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 Any other questions other than Bor? Mm -hmm. It's like an extended version of the current, probably current design process that we all are used to. Yeah. Can I have any question? Mm -hmm. You mentioned mobile apps, you know, that it's not so usual to do it there, but it's more on the web. So for web, you do have certain tools that help you test the page, for example, if it's meeting certain criteria, are there such tools for mobile apps? Uh, yes, actually, if you scan this, uh, there, yeah, there is a Figma file that's open for everyone, and uh, there you can see all the slides, and the kind of ex expanded, extended version of, uh, of all uh, these examples, and also all these principles, and we have a section of plugins that will help you uh, when you are designing for, uh, for mobile apps. Uh, it, they, they check contrast, they check if uh, your actual design even in Figma or other tools, tools have uh, big enough touch areas, for example. Uh, also, what, what else they do? There's uh, around 10 plugins and they all do different stuff. And when the, the app is actually developed, some of this is covered in code, not, not yes. anymore, right? Are there tools that run over an app? Uh, yeah, uh, Google has an official accessibility tool that basically um, you just uh, Turn it on in the background, I think, and uh, you run, you like use an app normally for like two minutes, and it scans uh, all the content and even things in the background that you can see. So that what uh, voiceover feature would use, and it gives you a report of uh, features that are inaccessible. Uh, for iOS, uh, there is there is no any official apps, but there are some third-party options that you can that you can use. Also, uh, developers when they are implementing apps in Xcode. There is an uh, accessibility part where the current code gets evaluated uh, if it's accessible or not. So it's, uh, Android is more oriented towards the app, it's, uh, the, the app on the mobile phone, 
and on iOS you can use Xcode to, to check that. Okay. Any more questions? I do have one. Okay. And somebody else also has one. Yes. Please, do, please, do. no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> do you find these rules as a limiting or helpful? More. Hmm. Where are you leaning more? Good question. Uh, Should we good, turn off the, the recording? The recording and everything. Challenging as hell. Yeah, right. <laughs> hmm. Sometimes it is challenging, I have to say. Uh, it depends. If, if there's a super complex feature, uh, it's very difficult to make it like 100% uh, accessible. If it's a sim more simple one, uh, it's a simple feature, then it's more helpful. The more complicated and the less freedom in uh, interactions and navigation and other stuff you have, then it gets more limiting. So it's kind of difficult to say that it's one or the other. It depends. So I know <laughs> that's like the worst possible answer, but uh, it really does. And there's also like few levels of like yeah. AA, yeah, exactly. There are three levels of accessibility. The first one, uh, basically all apps should, should have at least that first level of accessibility is the single A level. Uh, the double A, it's a bit more complex. It includes uh, more disabilities, basically. And the uh, triple A, it's like f um, it's uh, for super crucial actions. For example, if you are logging in into your like uh, I don't know health insurance page or something, uh, like everybody needs to be able to to do it. So there's like it's very certain uh, and strict uh, set of criteria for that. We did a AAA auditing website, so uh, and it was a challenge. I can assume. Yeah. yeah. Forget the responsiveness. Yeah, <laughs> for example. Yeah. So you did the audit or you no, designed I, the. I was the. The auditor. Uh, the audited. Ah, you were audited. Ah, okay. And it went well. Apparently. Yes. Apparently, yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, did you use the WCAG rules or? Uh, more or less, yes. But we also had some other sources, and then we got kind of help from the audit company. To nice. Kind of what do we need to do more? And so it was, it was a challenging but pleasurable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm sure you learned a lot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have one question. Mm -hmm. Did you have a case uh, when the brand colors were inaccessible? Yes, it happened actually okay. with Manuel. If I can, I'll just uh -huh. say this question once again. So. Just so, uh -huh. so that we have it on recording. So, did you ever have a case if brand colors were not accessible themselves? Yes. Uh, actually, the the app on the left uh, it's uh, from Philips, and it doesn't have uh, the the this green is not accessible on the white text, and the white text is on it. Uh, however, uh, yeah, the, then it got raised to the brand team, and they fixed it eventually. This is a bit older screenshot, so yeah, it can happen, and they will update it. Uh, but uh, not the here. It was like not the brand. It's the, the main brand color, but uh, the colors from the design system. So, but uh, all design systems are living beings, uh, so they get updated if something like that happens. Okay, we have two questions in the back. Uh, well, the lady on my left, at least. If I understood correctly, you offer this accessibility review as a service. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm, yeah, there was interest. Interest. We did, uh, I think, five accessibility reviews. Uh, mm, there's no rule which kind of companies, I would say. Uh, the, mostly to those that have a large user base because it's more important for them. But there's no rule. It's like from banking to telecoms, and uh, it was mo mostly banking and telecom apps. Okay, we had one more question. Yeah. Yeah, so to be completely honest, I'm a part of Infinum and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm usually involved in the, in the sales process. So, my question is like the, the whole accessibility initiative for Infinum, it was a big thing. Like, we didn't do this, we didn't pull this over the night. Um, and obviously, it was a success because you've managed to convince people that this is okay, that we need to start offering this as a service. But is there anything that you, you would have done differently? Like from the from the initial perspective, if you had to do it once again, or if mm -hmm. somebody here in the audience uh, should pitch this to their management, is there any you know caveats that anybody should be aware of, or is there anything that you would suggest as a problem or something that we should have done differently? Mm -hmm. There's one thing. 
uh, initially they're from from every team so in iOS Android design front and back and there was always somebody interesting in interested in this topic and there were like some internal team activities uh, initiatives uh, they were trying to to push but uh, it was without any results as long as we did not uh, actually got aware of each other and started working on it together as I said uh, like uh, Accessible design doesn't matter if it's not implemented with accessibility in mind. That was the main problem, I would say. Also, uh, the sooner the better. Uh, so we, we started working on this like, I don't know, two years ago or five years ago, and then we would create even more more accessible products. And now we have to like, that's why I said, it's now we're even reviewing our past stuff because yeah, we were lacking the experience and knowledge to, to do it. Uh, because it's, it's really not easy. Uh, it takes experience to, to do something what is really accessible. And still, there's still a ton of uh, products from that we created that are not accessible uh, as accessible as we would like to. Uh, but yeah, we are trying our best. Anybody else from Infinite want to, wants to toot our horn? <laughs> yeah. Nobody. Okay, I do have one que two questions. Mm -hmm. First of all, do you have that nude that you almost sent through the airdrop? No. Okay. Yes, Jason. Second, uh, so usually when you have in, uh, when you're trying to drive something in the company, you know, in the beginning the energy is high, everybody's psyched up. Once you are closing in on the on the end, you know, you, you can you can see the goal, so you are once again motivated. But was there a mess in the middle that you kind of had to kind of push through? You know, that hmm. you weren't sure what's going on, had to make some trade-offs. I don't know if if there is something that you would say is your takeaway. Uh, you know how to push things through, you know, after the first month has passed and, you know, and you are still three mm. months away from getting the results and goal. Yeah, it, it did happen, I have to say. Which uh, I didn't know, so it's not a yeah, blended question. Know. Yeah, um, for it was difficult to, to actually conceptualize, concept, we create a concept of what the best outcome of this. Uh, so we were trying to like with different types of guides, internal lectures, uh, other things, and we were not sure should we focus more on on web or mobile because then we realized that the web is kind of supported already with documentation and uh, mobile is not as much. So it's well initially it was we knew it's a problem, but it was difficult to find the solution for it, uh, the, like the form of a solution, and that's why we ended up with uh, with all kinds of stuff. First, we are uh, soon will release a blog post about uh, about this topic and how we started started the initiative and separate posts about uh, uh, accessibility in design, Android, uh, iOS, web, and so on. Uh, and yeah, we had in internal lectures. Uh, also, we uh, will soon publish a public handbook with all the knowledge that we have about accessibility, including the the principles that I pointed out. Uh, so yeah, it's, it was difficult to to pin on a specific like uh, solution for everything, uh, the the end like a single result, and that's why we have these talks, but also some different stuff. Okay, cool. Any more questions? Okay, then I say this Thank is you it. Thank you very much. Yeah.